Let's see how we can display missing information in pivot tables. Now when I say missing information, let me give you an example. We have a table here called TBL data and it's formatted as a proper Excel table. So on the design ribbon, we'll go up to summarize with pivot table and I'll place this pivot table right here. So for the rows, I'll place the date and for the values, I'll place the sales. Let's do a small amount of customization. We'll give them better titles. We'll expand the dates. And notice this is getting expanded down to the day level, which we don't need in this report. We'll take the expansion out of the day level as well as the quarters. So we'll have just year and month. We'll customize the formatting of the numbers. I like to give them a nice currency style. And then maybe just for a nice touch, we'll add some blank rows between each year. So not a bad looking pivot table. The problem is each year only contains months where sales occurred. And as you can see, there were no sales in January of 2022, just as there were no sales in March or April of 2023. But I'd like to see those months. I'd like to see months where sales did not occur because seeing months where sales did not occur may be just as important as months where sales did occur. Because these are dates, Excel has an innate understanding of all of the months contained within a year. So we could go to a month, go back up to the analyze ribbon and under field settings, the layout and print tab, we have an option here to show items with no data. Hit OK, and now we'll see January through December of 2022 and 2023. Now the downside of this is when you go in and you say show items with no data and you're dealing with dates, that is every date from the beginning of time to all of the dates into the future. So we're seeing every date before our oldest record, February 8th of 2022, and every date after our oldest record, which is July 18th, 2023. But this is easily fixed because we can go in and filter out all of the dates before the data and all the dates after the data. Let's also go up to the pivot table options and zero fill those empty cells. So that ability to go into the field settings of a date, go to layout and print and show items with no data really only exists when you're dealing with date based items because Excel just understands what dates are. But what if we weren't working with dates? Let's pull out the years and the months and instead put in the sales reps. This pivot table only shows sales where a sales rep has sales. This is not a complete list of all of our sales reps. It's only showing 12 reps. But you can see here in my master list of all sales reps, I have 15 reps, but I only show 12 because those are the 12 that had sales. But I wanna see the missing three. Likewise, if I wasn't using sales rep, but was instead using product, I'd still have the same problem because I'm only showing sales for products that sold, of which there were nine. But in my inventory, I have 12. So there are three missing products from this report. Now let's try to do what we did before. I'll go back up to analyze and field settings, layout and print, show items with no data, hit okay. The list does not change because this list, this pivot table is looking at this data in the TBL data table. It's not looking at these lists. These are my complete lists. This is what happened. And the pivot table only shows what happened. So how can we get those missing products or missing sales reps? What many people will do is they will add dummy records into the table for the missing items. So if we added an entry for darts and an entry for hammocks, if we were to then go to the pivot table, right click refresh, we'll now have darts and hammocks in our table. But I don't really like the idea of adding dummy records into the data. So let's hit undo. A better way to do this is to create a list of every sales rep or a list of every product. Then using Excel's relationships feature, we can connect this table here, which we'll call the fact table to these tables here, which we'll call dimension tables. So the facts are what actually happen, whereas the dimensions give meaning to the facts. In this case, it gives us the more complete picture of the sales reps or of the products. Now there are a couple different ways to do this, but the way that I'm going to approach it is by going up to the data tab and then using this button right here called relationships. It's in the data tools group. We'll give it a click. And here I'm gonna create a new relationship and that relationship will be between the facts table called TBL data and the sales rep table called TBL sales reps. Now the column that those two tables share in common are the sales rep column. We'll hit okay and we've created a relationship that links the sales rep column of the fact table to the sales rep column of the dimension table. While we're here, we'll create another one for product. So new, we're going to connect the data table to the product table using the product column as the connective tissue. 
we need to incorporate these other two tables into our data model. So we can pick the sales from the blue table, but the sales reps or products from one of the dimension tables. Now, since we've already created the relationships, we just need to redo the way our pivot table started. Because at the moment, our pivot table is only looking at the blue table. So I'm gonna click in the pivot table, go up to analyze, do a select pivot table, and then hit my delete key. So now when we go up to insert and pivot table, we're going to start our pivot table from the data model. So instead of coming from a single table, we'll come from the behind the scenes data model that includes the tables and their relationships. We'll go ahead and put the pivot table here. And now we see multiple tables of which we can pick fields from different tables into the same story. So I'm gonna go ahead and put sales in the values, but now instead of using the sales rep field from the data table, we're gonna use the sales rep field from the dimension table that has the complete list of sales reps. Notice that it's still only showing sales reps who've had sales. So our impulse is to go up to analyze, field settings, layout and print, but notice here the show items with no data field is grayed out because you can't use this option when you're working with multiple tables in a more sophisticated data model. So does that mean the game's over? No. There are two different ways to solve this problem. One way would be to go to the pivot tables options and then go to the display tab. And here we can check a box that says show items with no data on rows. There's also a corresponding one for show items with no data on columns, but we'll go for the one for rows. Hit okay. And now we see the complete list of sales reps, whether they had a sale or not. Let's do some cosmetic cleanup, better titles. Let's format the numbers. And let's fill in those gaps with zeros. If we were to take sales rep out of the report and put product in its place, we see every sale for every product, whether that product was sold or not. And we didn't have to resort to including dummy records in our fact table data. Going back to the pivot table options on the display tab, if you did not wish to use this show items with no data on rows feature, you can still have those unsold products displayed by using a DAX formula. So I'll select the pivot table. We'll go here to the heading of the TBL data table, right click and add a measure. This measure will be contained in the data table and we'll call it all sales. You can add a description if you like. The function is going to be an if that checks to see if the sum of the sales is equal to zero. If it is, then we'll display a zero. Otherwise, we'll perform the sum operation to sum up the sales. Close parentheses for the sum, close parentheses for the if. Now, the really nice thing about doing this as a DAX formula is you can embed the number style within the formula. So I'm gonna give this a currency style with zero decimal places. So before we were using the sales where we only see sales where sales occurred, but we could take that out and add all sales and now we see every sale of every product, whether that product was sold or not. Now this also works if we take product out of the rows and use the sales rep from the dimension table. As long as we're using a table that has the complete list, this DAX formula will show all sales for everything, no matter what. So now that you've seen two ways of solving this problem, you can choose which way is best for you. They both have their pros and cons. If you wanna to go to the pivot table options, display tab, we could just check a box for show items with no data on the rows, but this would apply to every pivot table regardless of how that table was constructed. So this might be a little too global for your liking, but by setting up a DAX formula, you'd be able to pick and choose when you want to see everything versus only activity by just using the appropriate function. So if you wanna see everything, use the all sales DAX function. If you only want to see where things actually occurred, then you can just use the built-in aggregation. This file is available for download if you want to go in and just review it for the DAX code. And if you have any other suggestions for ways to solve the same problem, please put them down in the comments. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.